So you've all been asking for it in the comments, America's Cup main sales. So the obvious thing is for the America's Cup 75 class, AC75 class, we've got a totally new type of mainsail system which we've not really seen in, well we've definitely not seen in the America's Cup before and we've not really seen it much in high performance sailing. So it's led to a lot of questions, how are they going to trim these sails, will it be like anything we're familiar with from our normal dinghies and yachts and you know what sort of systems, what sort of sail shapes will you create with this twin skin um, soft sail hybrid system. So a few things here, really interesting points, the boom, the no boom, Luna Ross's magic magnets and then of course Emirates Team New Zealand with another ingenious rule work workaround. So some fascinating points around the main sails but before we get stuck into that detail let's just recap about what we're really talking about here. So the twin skin mainsail is kind of a go-between between, between a solid wing which we saw in um, well on Stars and Stripes back in the past but we also saw in uh, San Francisco and Bermuda these solid wings with an articulated joint and they were hugely efficient but also very difficult to manage. Now the soft sail allow you to hoist those sails up and down, keep the mast in the boat, you don't have to crane a rig in and out, um, but they're a lot more efficient than a standard uh, single skin system. So got Rob on the line with me. Um, Rob, can you explain a bit more about the efficiencies? Well, I, they've kind of approached this from, from two directions in a sense. So obviously before they had solid wings and they are clearly the best from a performance point of view, but they're massive logistical challenges with getting those up and down. I think it took like 30 people to put a wing up. So they wanted to get rid of that. And then um, at the other end of the, the kind of the performance spectrum, you'd have your conventional single skin sail, which hangs off a mast. Um, and the difficulty with that is that I, with, um, with a single skin sail off a mast, you end up with quite large separation bubbles around the, the back edge of the mast on, on, the luff, on the windward side and the leeward side of the sail. Um, and what you need for performance is effectively the greatest delta pressure between the windward and the leeward side of the sail. Um, and those separation bubbles really limit that. So uh, they did a load of testing at Southampton University on this. And if you if you put a sail in the wind tunnel, so they did this with a, a metal sheet formed like a sail, and then you put a mast in front of that, it reduces your drive by 20%. And then if you take that same sail and you hang it off the leeward edge of the mast, so you effectively fare the leeward side into the mast, you get half of that drive back. So the logical next step to that is to have a second skin on the windward side of the mast and you get most of your drive back. So we're talking in the ballpark of 20% more drive from the double skin sail, twin skin, skin sail, than you'd be getting from a conventional conventional single skin sail. And that's, that's by elimination of those separation bubbles. And then because you don't have this leeward separation bubble, you end up with cleaner flow passing over the, the leeward skin and that in turn means that you can run more camber because you'll get leech separation later than you would with a single skin so you get this double whammy benefit of for a given angle of attack you'll get approximately 20 percent more drive but then you can also increase your angle of attack because you're not going to stall so easily so th there's a lot more drive coming from these double skin sails than you'd get from a normal sail. By sealing onto the deck, you effectively double your aspect ratio, there or thereabouts. It's obviously not a perfect seal, so it won't be quite doubling. But when the boat, when sailing boats are sailing angles of, apparent wind angles less than about 45 
50 degrees, they will have more drive force by going to higher aspect ratios. So again, sealing the sealing the sail down onto the deck gives them a lot more drive force. So that's the reason they want to do it. More drive force for a given side force, healing force. And that, that's effectively through a reduction in induced drag. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the rules around these sails, because that, like the foils, shapes the design challenge. So twin skin and the masts that they're attached to are the shape of those are defined in the rules and they have two mast tracks obviously on either side of that D shape. The height of the rig and the, um, the height of the mast, the length of the mast is defined and the height of the rig where the mast steps in the boat is defined relative to the foil arms. That's to stop people getting any sneaky leverage um, gains by putting their mast lower down. Then they've got these um, kind of mainsail kind of free trimming areas. In the bottom one and a half meters of the sail, they can put structures inside the sail. And in the top four meters of the sails, they can put structures inside the skins there as well. So a big question obviously is, you know, what are they gonna put in these areas? How are they trimming these sails? What's between the skins? So we're gonna delve into that boat by boat, have a discuss about what we see and, uh, and why we like it. Let's start with Luna Rossa. Luna Rossa have got the prettiest mainsail setup system. It is so sleek, so well tailored to the deck, and it works so well that, you know, there's been suggestions that they're using um, magnets to manipulate the sail shape in this bottom third. Now, I've had a look through quite a lot of the footage, and unfortunately we don't get any stern cam when they're actually kind of taking apart this uh, clue box on the main to really see what's in there. But we can um, we can see a few details, especially from the light wind day when they were really eased off on the track. And what we see is two large turning blocks on the traveler, which is recessed into the deck. Those two big um, turning blocks, they're carrying the main sheet tension and all the main loads. There's then two white lines, which have subsequently changed to black lines in the last race. But those two lines, I don't think are trimming lines at all. I think they're hydraulic lines, which go to the kind of outhaul slash um, main sheet trim angle. So obviously Luna Rossa without a boom. Um, We'll discuss a little bit more when we get onto Ineos about boom versus no boom, but um, yeah, no boom. So they need uh, need some way of adjusting the outhaul, how much depth there is in the sail. And Luna Rossa are doing this in two ways. First of all, mast rotation. So as soon as you rotate the mast, that's going to put depth into the into the front of the sail. It's going to change your en entry angle. But as you twist the mast, that's going to pull the outer skin, the leeward skin, tight and it's gonna loosen off the windward skin. And this is actually the opposite of what you want. So you need some sort of adjustment at the, at the trading edge of the sail, the clue, which allows those skins to slide over one each other. And the more mast rotation you put in, the more camber you induce into that sail, the more you need these kind of differential outhauls. And I think that's what we're seeing with Luna Rossa with these two hydraulic, white hydraulic hoses, which run parallel to the main sheet up into the sail. And the main sheet is just doing these um, kind of twin skins. Um, we do see on Luna Rossa actually a, um, a flatter shape on their windward skin. It's quite noticeable when you compare some of the footage. It's often quite hard to see the leeward skin and how much depth they're putting into that. Sometimes not so much, but there's been some heli shots which show a decent amount of camber in the leeward skin and a decent thickness to that sail shape uh, section. But a lot of the time, I think their two skins are kind of coming together towards the back edge of the window. Um, again, really neat, um, neat outhaul system. Those hydraulics are really neat and tidy, tucked away between the two skins. And it's perfectly well tailored to the deck. We only really see a bit of a crunching of the clue of the sail when they're running at max main sheet. Now, what this means with just the hydraulics, the outhaul and the boom, 
and the main sheet going down to a turning block and forward, that obviously means the hydraulics for adjusting the main sheet have to be below the deck. And we can see when Pietro Sabello runs across the deck, that deck is really just an aero fairing, probably to cover up the hydraulics uh, underneath the main sheet system. And the way those turning blocks are facing, it means the hydraulic ram for the main sheet must be forward of um, that, that traveller. And those sheets are going to sweep an arc below the fairing. So, yeah, that's what keeps it so neat and tidy. Everything kind of down below deck and just allows them to have this beautiful, well-shared, um, well-fared shape um, above the deck. So super nice execution from Lunarossa. My only thing is sometimes their traveler movement looks a little bit um, robotic, a little bit janky. And I think that's due to the fact that they've got a lot of load on that. You've got those main sheet going up. You've got no boom to take the kind of like compression loads to push the clue out. So all that tension going to be on the main sheet as well. I, th I think it is, it is a really good, really good mass setup. There seems to be a, um, a separation between the mass rotation and what happens at the clue though. So that also seems a little bit um, kind of robotic, but the shapes they end up with really nice um, low drag as well. There's no, um, there's no kind of crap hanging out in the middle of the space. But I do think, you know, there's nothing magical going on there. There isn't any magnets. We get a few glimpses between the skins on the light wind days and there's really not much that's um, happening between those skins. It's just all on the nice cut the sail and the uh, and the trimming. Let's move on to Team Ineos. Now, the big difference they've got to the two remaining uh, syndicates is Ineos use a boom. And it's not always been the case. They have trained when they first um, well, in the first months of having their first B1, they were sailing with a boomless setup, but it looked really ugly. And I think they were really struggling to um, adjust that sheeting angle and pull the depth out of the mainsail when they need. Don't forget these boats have got to um, go, go upwind and downwind. It's not like the downwind, they can just put up another sail. So you've got to create a huge amount of power out the same sail area. So you need a hugely versatile cell. And I think they were struggling with their early attempt at the boomless setup. So they just went to the boom, you know, stick with what you know. And in many regards, looking at their setup, yeah, the boom's ugly. It's just on the deck. It's not a great shape, but they are achieving uh, end plating of that main to the deck, which as Rob said earlier, is hugely important. Uh, they're doing that with a little um, blow up um, kind of inflatable sock underneath the boom and that and that's working quite well for them they've not got loads of ropes tailing that off um, I mean traditionally the advantage of a boom for your normal sailing boat is that you will be using kind of main mainsail angles well outside the footprint of the boat and when the clue of your sail wants to go outside the corner of your boat you really need a boom and a kick attention to control that clue properly but as soon as the clue comes within inside the extreme of the, of the boat you kind of don't really need that um, that kicker so much in fact these boats aren't really using kicker at all they're using all main sheet tension to control the leech um, and then outhaul the mass rotation to control the depth so it's kind of questionable what you'd really need a boom for there are some advantages. First of all, um, those compression loads from the outhaul, um, they're not on the main sheet, so you can load the boom up with them, put the compression in. Also, the boom gives you something to rotate the mass with. So when they, that compresses, it twists the mass, um, maybe makes that a little bit easier for them as well. And finally, the boom gives somewhere for them to house their hydraulics. We said Lunarossa have this deck fairing, that means it's got to be superficial and the hydraulics are below that and then any structure for the deck has got to be again below that whereas um, Ineos you can put the hydraulics for the main sheet and the boom and we see that Ineos's main sheet dead ends on the traveler so that traveler doesn't have to have a turning point or anything no lines need to be taken from there underneath the deck you just got a traveler and the hydraulic systems for moving the traveler up and down 
and it's quite a busy back end of the boat because you've got the rudder raking rudder as well so quite a lot going on there and having all the hydraulics for the main sheet up in a boom kind of makes sense having it up in the, up in the sail just to declutter the back of that boat I mean it looks ugly and I think a lot of the time we are looking at just the bottom of the sails and we probably focus too much on what the foot of the sails look like and we don't really get a good a good view up the rigs and that can that can cloud our uh, cloud our opinion somewhat but if you look at the first pattern if you ignore the boom booms doesn't look great ignore the boom if you look at the first pattern of the Ineos mainsail and that's generally looking a pretty good shape and from there on upwards I think they can get a lot of the sail control they need from the setup they've got so no massive advantage to using the boom but when you think about the tiny proportion of mainsail that it's affecting it's probably not as big a deal as people make out certainly um, what's going on and the rest of the rig and how you're manipulating the rest of that sail is far more important of the boom or no boom uh, choice let's talk about my least favorite main sheet system main trimming system and that is emirates team new zealand okay so that's enough for one day i've um, just finished editing that up this video has been a bit of a nightmare i've had a few technical issues with recording so i've had to paraphrase quite a lot of what rob was saying so actually a lot of this stuff credit to rob it's um, you know his ideas as well as as well as mine um next episode looking at emirates team new zealand really interesting what they've done another rules loophole and um finally looking at the top of the rigs and what control mechanisms they might be using at the top of the sail so as always thanks for the view take care and i'll uh, see you around